Thankfully, we have a friend who is here on the left. Trees and national side to be with you once again this morning. Thank you, for the knowledge of his divine vision and revelation that he has passed on man to mankind at the end of this world for the saving of our souls through the body of Dr. Henry Pepper King. At this time, we invite and we encourage each and every one to be a part of this divine lecture this morning. Being very conscious that there is life after death and there is eternal life after death. So that at this time, you will ask the Holy Spirit, who is Yahshua, to allow you to understand, to allow you to hear, and keep away all distractions at this time. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, Incorporated. This is a school and it is not a church. And neither are we affiliated to any other religious or scientific organization. This school is founded based on a divine vision and revelation given to a man, Dr. Henry Clifford King, in the state of Ohio in the year 1921. Schools were set up short the world for the purpose of having this divine vision and revelation shown, explained, and taught to each and every one. Your school is held in Port of Spain, Trinidad, and I'm your school officially. I'm Dr. Clifford Waters. In this school, we preach and we teach using the true, correct, original, and only name of your mind, Heavenly Father, which is Yah. The word of Son, which is Elohim, and the name of the Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua, as contained in the original Hebrew manuscript. When scripture translators and Bible translators came across the true divine name of the Heavenly Father, which is Yah, they wrongly gave us the common title of Lord. When they came across the true divine Eucharistic title for the Word of Son, which is Elohim, they wrongly gave us the common title of God. And when they came across the true name of the Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua, whether manifested in or out of a physical body, they gave us the pagan trilogy of Jesus Christ, Lord and God. They are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, it states, for though they are made in our concords, spelled with an S, show that there are many of them, whether these gods are in heaven or in earth, are their lords many and gods many. Each lord must have a name, and each god must have a name also. So the question one should ask oneself, what is the name of the creator of the world, seeing that Lord and God are titles and not names? In the Greek mythology, there are many gods. You have such gods as Hercules, the god of strength, Venus, the god of love, and Neptune, the sea god. Hercules, Venus, and Neptune are their names, or their title, are in all things. In England, you have a place called the House of Lords. And at the House of Lords, we have such lords as Lord Baltimore, Lord Snowden, Lord Chesterfield, just the name of you. Baltimore, Snowden, and Chesterfield are their names, Lord's the title bestowed on them by the monarch of England. Jesus is a name, but as it's an erroneous or it's a wrong name, a minor investigation on your part into a good or average dictionary or encyclopedia, you will come across these facts for yourself. There is no change in the Hebrew alphabet, neither is there a change in the Greek alphabet. The Russian alphabet or the German alphabet at the time of the Savior's birth. A further minor investigation into the letter J will reveal the letter J was originally the letter I and came into existence for the first time on the face of the earth 
within the 17th century, 17, 18, 19, 20, which makes the letter shape only 400 years in its total existence on the face of the earth. Bear in mind, the true Savior of the world, who is Yahshua, world is still playing 2,000 years ago, and the letter shape will only be given 400. So when you take the 400 from the 2,000, you get 1,600 years. What that is saying, it took 1,600 years after the birth of Yahshua the Messiah, the Savior of the world. After the fulfillment of his ministry, his death, his burial, his resurrection, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and the apostles going and preach and teach and heal in his name, it took 1,600 years after those events before the world or the Bible translators could come up with a name with a letter J. Likewise, the first man that the Yahweh would be his name to is the man who would be called Moses at the backside of Mount Sinai. And that also took place 4,000 years ago. And the letter J is only 400. So when you take the 400, from the 4,000, you get 3,600 years. His commandments to honor his whole holy name is of 3,600 years after that. For your Bible translators to remove the name of Yahweh out of the Bible and put in Jehovah in it. So, therefore, such names as Jesus, John, Joshua, and Jehovah are impossible reverence of those names. A further examination of the name Jesus, we'll find that J.E. is originally I.D. When pronounced, it is pronounced E.O.L.A., which is the name of a Babylonian God. The part S.U.S. in the name Jesus comes from Z.U.S.U.S., the supreme God of the Greek. And Christ, which is not a name, it's a title, come from Krishna, the Hindu son of God, which is the worship of the physical sun you see in the skies today. The true correct original and only name of the Almighty Heavenly Father is Yahweh. The name Yahweh comes from the original Hebrew Tetragrammaton. Tetra meaning for one, two, three, and Grammaton representing these four characters or symbols in Hebrew, which are Yod, He, or He. The Hebrew language is a consonantal language in that they do not use the aid of vowels to make the others pronounceable. So it's represented by these four characters. It is pronounced Yahweh by the Hebrew speaking people. The Hebrew language is read from right to left, unlike that of the English language that is read from left to right. When the Hebrew tetragrammaton is transliterated letter for letter, song for song, symbol for symbol, this is a Y, this is an H, this is a W, and this is an H. In order to make the tetragrammaton pronounced with Yahweh in English, as it is pronounced Yahweh by the Hebrew speaking people, we as English speaking people, we need the aid of our vowels to make our words pronounceable. And these vowels are A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y, taking the place of I. Through this divine vision and revelation, it was revealed in order to know which vowel to use and where to place it, that one must go to the first man, Adam, that was drawn out of Virgin Mother Earth, using the only vowel in his name, which is the A placing it between the Y and the H to make pronounceable Yah, yeah, the masculine portion of our Heavenly Father's name. You were further instructed to go to the first woman Eve that was drawn out of the man Adam, using the only vowel in her name, which is the A, placing it between the W and the H to make pronounceable way the feminine portion of our Heavenly Father's name. You are my Heavenly Father, whose true, correct, original, and only name is Yahweh, 
is both male and female in principle right to themselves. And we don't testify that this is true because right to another physical bodies, whether we be man or woman, we possess both male and female glands called hormones. The male gland or hormone that is in everybody's body is called androgen, symbolized by A, showing proof that the A is correctly placed between the Y and the H to make pronounced by Yah the masculine portion of our heavenly father's name. The female gland or womb that is in everybody's body is called estrogen, symbolized by E, showing proof that the E is correctly placed between the W and the H to make pronounceable way the feminine portion of our heavenly father's name. So whether we be man or woman, we possess both androgen and estrogen right within us. In a man, there's a greater percentage of androgen and a smaller percentage of estrogen, estrogen. In a female, there's a greater percentage of estrogen and a smaller percentage of androgen. Testifying to your Elohim, which is the word of son, is Yahweh's divine pluralistic title. Elohim is the divine title that Yahweh chose himself, unlike that of Lord and God. And E-L in Hebrew theology, it means Yah. So there's a resemblance between Yahweh and Elohim, Yah and Yah. When you turn your Bibles to so-called John 5, 43, the same in the world when he came into his ministry states, I am come in my Father's name. And you receive me not. If another or let another come in his own name, him you will receive. From a natural standpoint, a natural child, when it is put into this creation, thinks of the natural surname of the natural parent or father. If that parent surname is Smith, Jones, or Lewis, that child automatically is called Smith, Jones, or Lewis. Likewise, the same with both. He said, I am come in my father's name. So he has come taking on the masculine portion of the heavenly father's name, which is Yah. And the next part of his name, which is pronounced Shua, in Hebrew theology, it means salvation. So his name is Yah Shua. Yah, the short form for Yahweh, and Shua manifesting that he came into the world to save mankind from their sins. However, we were taught that it is Jesus is saying, I am coming my father's name, and you receive me now. So let us examine if that is true. Also bear in mind there is no true in Hebrew, and the Savior of the world was a born Hebrew. However, we will still be broad-minded and see if it is possible that it is Jesus saying, I am coming my father's name. The thought is the heavenly father's name to be called Lord, God, Jehovah, some say Allah, some say Buddha. So when we go into the etymology of the term Lord, not only is it a title, but the term Lord has come from Adonai, it has come from Buddha, it has come from Baal, and Baal has come from Belzebub which is the prince of demons, or Lucifer, the serpent, the dragon, or Satan, as you may know it to be. So that is where Lord has come from. In, in other words, is a is an acceptable way to, to call on the devil. So somebody telling you the Lord bless you, and you don't know the meaning of it, the true meaning where it comes from, you accept it. But when you get to know the true meaning, I doubt you will want to accept it anymore. So that is where Lord has come from. And there is no resemblance with Lord and Jesus. Then we go to God, the term God, and they say that's the name of the Savior, the creator of the world also. And you see that the term God was called a by the Germans. God coming from Gothic, which is not in Poland. The Assyrians borrowed it from the Germans and spelled it G-A-W-D. 
and the English boy from the Assyrians and Spanish And if you read it from right to left, you see what you will get. Also, some say, and there's no resemblance to God and Jesus, saying he is coming in Father's name. What about Jehovah? No J in Hebrew, impossible for the same, the Creator's name, to be Jehovah. But then there is no resemblance with Jehovah and Jesus to say, Jesus come in his father's name, and his father's name is Jehovah. Then the question is, how did they get Jehovah from? What they did, the Bible translators did. See, the tetra, original tetra down is YHWH. What they change it from YHWH to JHVH, and they put the power points of Adonai, and that's how they created the name Jehovah. So truly, and there's no resemblance with Jehovah and Jesus. Likewise, Allah, there's no resemblance with Allah and Jesus, and there's no in Aram. Same, same to Buddha, there's no resemblance to Buddha and Jesus and all the rest of them. So truly, it is Yahshua, 2,000 years ago, walking the face of the earth, and he's saying, I am coming my father's name. Taking on that masculine portion, which is here, and sure, meaning salvation. And say, the world receive him not. Say, let another come in his own name, he will receive. So the world has rejected Yahshua and accepted Jesus and others coming in their own name. Just as how Yahshua prophesied it 2,000 years ago. And in Acts 4 12, it states, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua and Yahshua alone. Let me turn your attention to this chart. This chart is called the Mosaic chart. And on this chart, Yahweh, which is pure spirit, is symbolized by a cloud. Just as this orange and fiery color cloud extends through all the edges of this chart, and everything on this chart abides within the orange and fiery color cloud. So, to in principle, in like manner, there's everything in the universe, and the sum total of this creation abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Because Yahweh is the ultimate source substance, Yahweh is the limits and the bounds of all things. It is within Yahweh, which is pure spirit, that we all live and move and have our being. As some of your poets have said, so we are Yahweh's all spirit. Yahweh knew that man could not perceive of him or understand him in his pure spirit state, purpose right within himself to take on his super, incorporeal shape and form, that is having the shape and form of a man, yet without flesh and blood. That he entitled Yahweh Elohim, which is the word of Son. This great heavenly anthropomorphic being, Yahweh Elohim, is the archetype, or he is the original pattern of the universe. It is in Yahweh Elohim, in that same vision to Moses on top of Mount Sinai in the year 1490 BBY, showed Moses how we Yahweh Elohim is comprised in part, not in totality, of these nine divine principal attributes of Yahweh in an organized shape and form. Divine wisdom, divine knowledge, strong divine intelligence, divine love, divine justice, divine beauty, divine foundation, divine strength, and divine power. After Yahweh had Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai where he, Yahweh Elohim, instantaneously transformed himself into the three food, thoroughly furnished, tabernacle pattern or sanctuary that vision, which consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and the four throne above. One, two, three compartments, but one tabernacle pattern. We go about in this food to prove that everything in the universe is made and operates and it is dictated according to the structure and function 
of the divine tabernacle pattern. And absolutely nothing escaped the pattern. Yahweh Elohim also showed Moses how he created the heavens and the earth according to this divine tabernacle pattern. And he showed Moses the creation of coming out by his side. Yahweh Elohim could only be seen in divine vision and sometimes accompanied by a divine revelation as was given to the so-called John of the Isle of Patmos in the year 1490 BBY, in which he wrote in the so-called Book of St. John, chapter 1, beginning at the first verse which states, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with the hour, and the Word was the hour. Same was in the beginning with the hour. All things was made by him, Yahweh Elohim. And without him, Yahweh Elohim, was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that life was and still is the life of the life of man. Finally, Yahweh Elohim, manifested himself in the physical shape and form of a man, in title Yahshua Mosiah, who the religious were wrongfully or ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. This is going to verify that same so called book of St. John, chapter 1, beginning at the 14th verse, which states, And the word, Yahweh Elohim, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the holy begotten of the Father, for the grace and for the truth. Now, in this school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives to call it. One, to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Two, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in the Ashwini Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Three, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so called law of nature and the powers they can demand. Four, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures. Comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to escapade current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose, operating through the dispensation and ages. Seventh, to deserve and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the dragon, and Satan and his demons operate in the ministry of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Yet to earnestly contend with a common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua the Messiah and Yahshua the Messiah alone. And ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is to speak the truth. Our scripture lesson this morning will be taken from Exodus 15, chapter. I'm reading to you from the Holy Name Bible. Good morning. I'm reading to you from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late D.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association. I'm reading to you Exodus, the 15th chapter. Then sang Moses, and all the children of Israel were sung unto Yahweh, and spake, saying, I will sing unto Yahweh, for he had triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider had been thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and song, and he is to become my savior. He is my El, and I will praise him. My father's Elohim, 
and I will exalt him. Yahweh is a man of war, Yahweh is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his horse can he cast into the sea. His chosen champion, his chosen captains also are drawn in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Thy right hand, O Yahweh, has become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Yahweh, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. And in the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sendest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright as a heap, and the depths were revealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My love shall be satisfied upon me. I will grow my soul, my hand shall destroy them. Thou didst blow with thy wind, and the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. Who is like unto thee, O Yah, among the mighty? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Thou stretchest out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy hast left forth people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold in the inhabitants of Palestine. Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of the war, trembling, shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them. By the greatness of thine arm, they shall be as still as a stone, till thy people pass over, O Yah, till the people pass over, which thou hast purchased. Thou shalt bring them in, and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance, in the place, O Yah, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Yah, which thy hands have established. Yahweh shall reign forever and ever. For the horse of Pharaoh went in with his chariots, and with his horsemen into the sea. And Yahweh brought again the horses of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. And Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them, singing to Yahweh, for he had triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider had he thrown into the sea. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Merah, to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto Yahweh, and Yahweh showed him a tree, which he had cast into the waters. The waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of Yahweh thy Elohim, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am Yahweh, Rophekah, thy healer. And they came to Elam, where, where were twelve wells of water, and three score and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. Here in Exodus, at the chapter.
that we ask as our aid and prayer, please. To the law and to the testimony. As I say to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word. If they speak not according to this word. It is because there is no light in them. It is because there is no light, no light, no knowledge, or no understanding in them. The law is the first five books of your Bible, from Genesis to Deuteronomy, and there are 630 laws in all, not just 10 commandments. So that's the books of the book of the law. It's from Genesis. To Deuteronomy, that's the law. The testimony of the prophets are the next 34 books of your Bible. What is it from Joshua to Malachi? And if by now you have understood there is no shame Hebrew, that person's name cannot be Joshua. That person's name will be Yahshua or Yahushua, but certainly not Jesus. So he's saying to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, if you notice, I'm not saying that they speak not according to the Bible. I'm not saying that. Because when you mention if they speak not according to this word, some, somebody might be thinking that is the Bible you speak, you're talking, you're referring to. So if you go to John 1, I'll tell you, for those who don't understand, that the world is not a physical book. John 1 will tell you, in the beginning was the world. Since in the beginning was the world, and there was no one in the creation at the beginning, so then, if we can think of our, of our, on our own, we will realize that it's not speaking about the physical book. In the beginning was the world. There was no one existing in the beginning, but the creator of this universe. So that makes him the world. In the beginning was the world. Read on. And the world was with Yahweh. And the world was with Yahweh. And the world was Yahweh. And the world was Yahweh. You will find in your King James Version and these other versions where they have taken away the true names and title of the creator and the savior of the world and put in erroneous names and titles, you will find your book would say, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So even if you don't know the true name of the creator of the world is Yahweh, and his true divine title is Elohim, and if you don't know that Elohim is the word, the correct way, then I tell you the word was with God, and the word was God. So it still is not telling you that the word is a physical book or Bible. That some man is going to tell you they're preaching to you from the word of God. See? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh Elohim. Same was in the beginning with Elohim. They say all things was made by him. We don't. And without, him, and without him, the word was not anything made. See, if they're saying that the book, the physical book, is a word, they come to use him, unless it's a him. See, if you notice something when you refer to the word, the word they personify it as him. Would you call your Bible a him? That's the way you express something in the masculine. Read on. And without him, and without him, the word was not anything made. Was not anything made, made that was made. That was made. So everything that was made was made by him, the word, and that is Elohim. See, without him was not anything made that was made. Read on. In him was light. In him was light. And the light was the light of man. And the light was the light of man. Hold on. So no physical book is the light of man. See? Read on. 
and you go to the fourteen verse and it tell you. And the word. And you go to the fourteen verse and it tell you the word, which is Elohim, was made flesh. Was made flesh. In other words, words, Yahweh manifests himself in a spiritual embodiment of a man without flesh and blood that he entitled Elohim. A spiritual anthropomorphic being. And this spiritual anthropomorphic being was manifested in a physical body. The spirit man manifested himself in a physical body. Call Yahshua, that the world made flesh. And he's the one that dwelt among us. That's the word. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. So he, Yahshua, is the one who is and still is full of grace and full of truth. No, it's not your Bible. There are many Bibles. And in each and every one of them, there's something that is not put exactly how it's supposed to be put. Something that is uh, translated that is not correct. So you have these Bibles that, and these translators who purposely refused to put the name of the creator, who is Yahweh, his divine title, Elohim, and the name of the Savior in the world, who is Yahshua, in the book. So then, it can't be the Bible, because it's not full of grace, and it's not full of truth. See? But the one who's full of grace and full of truth is the creator dwelling in his body called Yahshua. He's the one that is full of grace and full of truth. So we clear that up. So that's why you have so much controversy in the world. See, and so much religion. Because everybody, every group have their own names and their own titles, and they have their own deities or gods that they serve it. But there is only one creator of this universe, and he is Yahweh, Elohim and one savior, and he is Yahshua. And that's the one we have been introducing you to, for you to know him. So as I say, you go to the law and you go to the testimony, and you must speak according to the word. So to speak according to the word, one may find that the prophets and the patriarchs back there, including Moses, they received divine visions and revelations from Yahweh. And that is how they could have speak according to the word. So what about down here today? What about down here today? Have Yahweh gone out of business? Has he stopped giving divine visions and revelations? Some would say yes. We have to depend on the religions of the world. Some would say that. While they're saying it, they will come to you and tell you, if you're close to them, I had a dream about so and so and so and so. But yet still they will deny the fact that Yahweh Elohim is still giving visions and what? Revelations but they will have a dream. Hmm? And that dream is not external to them, that's internal to them. And it's spiritual, and they want to know the meaning. And if you go to Isaiah 46, 9 and 10, Yahweh say, I am Yahweh.
Remember those former things ago. So Yahweh is telling them Isaiah 46, 9 and 11. He said, remember the former things of old. Remember what took place in the beginning. Remember it. Remember the former things of old. Mm -hmm. For I am Yahweh, and there is none else. Hold on. If you're reading from the, the, the books that they have taken away the name from, you'll either have I am the Lord or I am Jehovah. I am Yahweh and what? There's none else. There's none else. So where you get the Lord from? Where you get Allah and Good and all of them from? I am Yahweh and there's none else. Read on. There's no Elohim. There's no Elohim. Uh -huh. Besides me. Besides me. There's no Elohim. Besides Yahweh and Elohim. None. So since there's none, and there remains none, everybody else is false. Mm -hmm. I am Yahweh. I am Yahweh. And there's none like me. And there's none like Yahweh. Oh, you know that. Because we are going through understanding who Yahweh is. And the last lectures have been going into how Yahweh dealt with Peru and his host. Because he's showing that he's Yahweh and there's none what else. There's no other creator besides Yahweh. So when Yahweh started to play Egypt with those 10 devastated plagues, all those plagues was in reference to some deity that they were serving to show that all these gods they worship in have no power that there's none like Yahweh see so when they started destroying Egypt and when they called for all their magicians and everybody to work for them They could not have them, showing how powerful Yahweh is, you see, and continued to be. So when he was killing all the children of the, 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 the Egyptians, the firstborn, and the cattle, there was none that could save them. Hmm? Pharaoh himself was worshipped as a god, as a deity. He couldn't have saved them. And remember, I told you, he was wearing that 666. Ramses of the 18 month dynasty. And we have different successive ones down here wearing that 666 also. So if you remember the former things of old, one would understand that no one, no one, no deity, or ruler has any more power than the creator of this universe. She man gets so powerful with his devices, see, that he starts to think that he is the creator of this universe. He can do what he wants. That is the same thing happened with Pharaoh. What Pharaoh said, my river is my own, I have made it for my what? Self. See? Continue to read that, Declaring the end from the beginning. So, he said, I am Yahweh and there's none, none else. I'm Yahweh and there's none like me, is that correct? Declaring the what? End from the, the end from the beginning. So if he's declaring the, the end from the beginning, if you want to know what's happening down here, know what happened in the beginning. I mean, he, he hasn't, it's not superstition, you see. He has left rec a record. If you want to know how Yahweh operates, 
in the clear the end right from the beginning. So everything that happened in the beginning must happen at the what? The end. Didn't he change the climates? Didn't he change the seasons? So whatever happened in the beginning must happen at the end. So in the beginning, Yahweh gave visions and revelations to those who he select to go and warn the world at a particular time. When these men went out warning the world, I mean these prophets, was there any books and writers written? Did he send them in any, church, in any churches and mosques and synagogues? Did they graduate from any college or university? We must think about it sometimes. Did they go to the seminary school of their choice? Or he just download the information, just like you have the computers. Hmm? All information is downloaded and you just read it. Shem hmm? Yahweh and there is none else. I declare the end right from the what? The beginning. So if you don't know, I'm here to tell you. Because Yahweh has put a spirit in those that he has sent out to warn the world and has given each and every one a divine vision and revelation. The first man he gave it to was Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the year 1900 and what? 21. And he continues to enlighten those of his own. So Yahweh has not changed. He's still giving visions and what? Revelation. He's still the outpouring his knowledge upon all flesh. And this is your opportunity to be part of that knowledge. Because you say that knowledge is power. If natural knowledge gives you natural power, think about divine knowledge, the true one, that divine power. So we go to the law and we go to the testament. And if they speak not according to this word, in other words, if you have had no divine vision and revelation, you have no light in you. Give me John 17 chapter. Now, pictorially illustrated on this chart here is Yahshua the Messiah, the one who was taught is Jesus, who is truly Yahshua. And this is the night before he betrayed to be crucified. The night before he betrayed to be crucified. And he's in the garden of Gethsemane. And he's praying his prayer for his disciples. You see? And they said, These words speak Yahshua. And he's lifting up his eyes to heaven and saying, Father, the hour is come. Now, the question you should ask yourself is, Where is heaven? See? Because a lot of people. Their desires to, to be in heaven, and they don't know where heaven is. Mm -hmm. 
He lifted up his eyes to heaven. And someone would say, heaven is above the sun, moon, and stars. I beg to differ. He was not looking up within the sun, moon, and stars. Because you have to know who it is, who he really is. See? Give me John 1, 14, he was in the world. See? John 1, 14, he said, he was in the world, that's the savior of the world he's speaking about, yeah. Huh? John 1, 10, sorry. John 1, 10, he was read. in the world. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world was made by him. The one who made the world was walking the world in a physical body. Understand that, please, be, Because remember, Yahweh declared the end from the beginning. So the one who made the world was walking the world in a physical body. So Yahshua is Yahweh in a physical body. Let me spell it out for you. That's who he is. Yahshua is the creator of the universe. Walk in this universe that he has made in a physical body. See, and the man, man that he made spit in his face. Man that he created put a crown of thorns on him. Hmm? Man that he made wanted to kill him. That is to tell him how good mankind is. Because he was not conforming to what they had learned. He wasn't conforming to it. He was not bowing to what they would, had learned. And when you do not conform to mankind, they try to get rid of you. Because they're losing grip. They have to have control over people. So he was in the world, the world was made by him, and the world what? Knew him not. So if the world back there didn't know him, do you think they will know him now? Because Yahweh said he declared the end from the what? The beginning. So in the beginning they couldn't recognize him. They would never ever recognize him. Because what he did, he hid in a body. A body they could not ever recognize. And I will tell you something, he never left the world. He never left the world that he has made. That is man made doctrine. Because no one has ever gone beyond this creation to show you any, any other creation. They have never gone on. With all the space ventures they have, they have never left this universe. So here, Yahshua is in the Garden of Gethsemane and he's praying this prayer for his disciples. You know. These words speak Yahshua. And they said, These words speak Yahshua. You will have Jesus in your book. And lift up his eyes to heaven. And lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the always come. Father, the always come. See? And he lifted his eyes there to heaven. And you'll have people looking up in the sky up to today. Looking for God or looking for Yahweh. Hmm? You have the natural heaven to tell you about the spiritual heaven before you take the natural to understand the spiritual. You have a natural physical sun in the sky to tell you about the spiritual sun who is Yahshua the Messiah. Everything the Creator has made is to reflect Himself. See? So they say, 
lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, it must be always come. Give me Luke 17, 20 to 21. Because a lot of people think this heaven is above the sun, moon, and stars. Mm -hmm. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees. No. You see, when Yahshua was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of Elohim, when the kingdom of Elohim, you will have the kingdom of God. You see, where there is no kingdom of God. See, what is the title? Haven't you kissed somebody? I just want to make it easy for you to understand. It is the practice when children is born for them to be christened. And that practice comes to soup because of superstition and skepticism and ignorance. See? Because they have come into the world perfect. They're going to mess them up spiritually. So they take them and they say they're christening them. Hmm? So when the infant is taken to whatever the religion is, and they are accompanying adults, both male and female. And those company adults is called the Godfather and the Godmother. Is that not true? You see? But do you know the Godfather and the Godmother has a name? And the child is called a God child. So you call yourself God. Hmm? See what I'm saying? The people call themselves God by their practices. When we say, I am stretching it too far. But it's an everyday thing they do. They call themselves God. God fathers, God mothers, God brothers, God sisters. Hmm? God son, God daughter. So the child walks in and the child comes out to God too. A God child. See? But we pay little attention to these things. See, the divine title of the creator of the world is Elohim. Read on. When he was demanded of, of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of Elohim should come, when the kingdom of Elohim should come, he answered them and said, He answered them and said, The kingdom of Yahweh cometh not with the kingdom of Yahweh Elohim cometh not with observation. What is observation? Anything you could see, use in your eyes. Even if you have to get the aid of glasses, you still use in your eyes. That's observing it. And the kingdom of heaven cometh not with observation. You can't see it. Read on. Neither shall they say. Neither here. shall they say. Look here. Look heaven here up in the sun, moon, and stars, or look it across so. He said they mustn't say that. But don't they say it? Contrary to what was said for them not to say, Yahshua the Messiah said to them, don't say that. Don't say, look, the kingdom of heaven here, or look it there. Say, don't do that. But that's what they do. Mm -hmm. For behold, For behold Yahweh's king is in your midst. At that time, you said, Yahweh's king is in your midst. That's according to the Holy Day Bible. Because he is he, Yahshua the Messiah, is the king. And he was in the midst. You see? He's the king to put all mankind in his kingdom, which is heaven. See? And he was in their midst. But if you read it from the King James Version of the Bible, you see, the King James Version will tell you the kingdom of heaven is in man. They're not quite wrong about that. See? But to put it in its true context and place it, at that point in time when Yahshua the Messiah was praying for his disciples, they were not in the kingdom of heaven as yet. 
and the kingdom of heaven was not in man as yet. Why is that so? Because Yahshua the Messiah had not fully finished or completed fulfilling the law and the prophets. He was not completed with it. He hadn't died on the cross and cleansed the world from the sin that came in through Adam and the transgression. So the world was still in the sin coming that they inherited from the first man Adam. He had not taken that out of the way yet. And no sin, and some people say no sinner too, could enter into the kingdom of heaven. See, neither no liar. No, no lies. So when we taught these false names and titles to get into a righteous kingdom, the door doesn't close already. Just want you to understand that. Because if you're not speaking the truth, you're lying. One creator, one savior. So by just taking away his name, you have taken away salvation from the world. See? So the King James Version would have said, see, the kingdom of heaven is in man. But the, the time that the kingdom of heaven came in man is after Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection, your point of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, that's what how the Holy Spirit came in man. And they were in the kingdom and they were there. He put them in the kingdom on the day of what? Pentecost. The receiving of the gift of the Holy Spirit. That put them in heaven. In a heavenly state, heavenly state of consciousness, the knowledge of love the truth. See? And then there it is. So that is what Yahshua told her. See? But Yahshua, Yahshua, the one who put them in the kingdom, was in the midst. But he did promise them the kingdom. So it's at the day of Pentecost, that is when they receive. See, the knowledge of the kingdom in them. That's what made them go. That's what made them fearless. See, that they would appear to give up this natural life for the truth. Please continue reading. So he's lifting up his eyes to heaven because all of heaven is in him. And that eyes we're speaking about is not natural eyes. It's the eyes of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, the attributes. Because he is the creator of the world in a body. We know. He lifts up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the always come. Mm -hmm. Glorify thy son. He said, Glorify thy son. In other words, there's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. There's a glory of the natural and there's a glory of the spiritual. So he's asking for the, he's, the glory of the what? The spiritual. Read on. That thy son also may glorify thee. He said, glorify thy son, that thy son also might glorify the Father, which is Yahweh, Elohim. Read on. As thou hast given him power. You will have as thou hast given him power. Nobody names thou. So where is he indeed thou, he and him, 
His name should have been put here. As the Father Yahweh Elohim had given him power over all flesh. Power over all flesh. Now Yahweh had turned over the power to Elohim, and Yahshua is Yahweh Elohim in a body. So the Father has given him power over what? All flesh, all. If you notice something, it's not about religion. He didn't give religion power. He gave Yahshua the power over what? All flesh, we don't. That he should give eternal life. That he, Yahshua, should give eternal life to as many as thou To as many as the Father Yahweh Elohim has given him. You will have as many as thou has given him. See? So he has the power to give eternal life, showing that eternal life is a gift. So if you have to pray for it, if you have to pay for it, if you have to make sacrifices and ceremonies to get it, if you have to work to get eternal life, then you don't have it. You can't get it because it is a gift. See? And if somebody gave in your gift, they have to give it free. It must not have any cost to it. You mustn't have to do any work to get it or any favors to get it if it's a true gift. Anytime you have to do something to please somebody to get something, it's not a gift. Hmm? So he's not looking for mankind to have to please them, please him. He's just giving it. That he should give eternal life. Eternal life is a gift. So if you have to pay any kind of money for it, it's not a gift. If you have to do any kind of work to get it, it's not a gift. That he should give eternal life to as many as the Father has given. As the Father Yahweh Elohim had given it. Go ahead. And this is life eternal. So he goes on to tell us what eternal life is. Because we were made to feel that we have to do certain things to get eternal life. And some of those things start at our birth. That we have to be christened in a religion, follow that religion, doctrine, see, and whatever they, they, they expect of us, or whatever their rules and regulations are, and they tell us where we're going to get to heaven when we die. And this heaven they tell us is somewhere above the sun, moon, and stars. That's the lie. See, the whole thing is man made. Read on. And this is life eternal. He said, and he's telling them what eternal life is. He says again. He said, this is life eternal. That they might know thee. That they might know they have to know somebody. And your King James Version has that they might know thee, the only true God. Right there, they're telling you, you have to know who the true creator is. Because there's only one creator. The only true God that said anything came to Moses, but it's the only true Elohim. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua the Messiah. And, and they say, and to know Yahshua the Messiah, who the, who the Father has sent. But you will not have Yahshua, you will have Jesus. You see? But there was no man 2,000 years ago named Jesus. So you have to find out who was the one that was sent. Because eternal life is to know the true creator of the world and to know the true savior. Not knowing the true creator and the true savior, you're in hell already. Because knowledge is power. You don't have to die physically. See? Without knowing your true creator and your true savior, you're spiritually dead. So this preaching is to resurrect the spiritual dead world. This is what it's about. To put you in heaven. To put you in a heavenly state of mind and consciousness 
why are you here? So that spirit within you could be elevated. So eternal life is to know. Tell me something. Could you know anything at all when you're there? Where's the school or place you're going to learn when you're there? Because eternal life is to know. So for you to know, you must have a teacher. Who's going to teach you when you're there? Hmm? This is real hurtful to see your friends, your loved ones, your neighbors, and all of them. To see the pain in your dead bodies for the last rites, and they're going to proclaim in some way to, that they're safe in Jesus' hands. when you turn on life is to know. So the question is, did they know before they died? That is where the question is. And once you follow in, the religions of this world, you could answer that question for yourself. Eternal life is to know. So when you walk in this space at the face of this world, you're supposed to be walking in heaven already. You should be in heaven already. So when this body, this mortal shall have put on immortality, that immortality would be a heavenly immortal body. See? Because there's a natural man and there's a spiritual man. So with the right spiritual teaching, that spiritual man that is enhanced in the physical body, he said he has not what? Already. Because he knows. See? But he can't, eternal damnation, we walking around, thinking we're right. We have an opinion of everything and don't know that we think we're in heaven, but we're living in hell, as a songwriter had put it. So that is why we preach. See, to resurrect that dead man. To get you to know who your creator really was, is. Because eternal life is to know it. Eternal damnation is not to know. Then, we go to Psalms 103 and 7, and it says, Yahweh, he made his ways known unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. So that is why I've been taking some time to show you Yahweh's ways and his acts, dealing with Moses and the children of Israel. And by so doing, the adversary or the devil comes into play. And it shows you how he deals with the adversary. See? So when we see Moses and the children of Israel were delivered by a mighty hand, Yahweh, with his phenomenal cloud, a pillar cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by what? Night. And how he parted the Red Sea, and have the children of Israel go on dry what? Dry ground. Remember the east wind come and dry the ground? Yeah. See? Moses stretched all his word, yeah, and the east wind come and dry the ground, sure. See? The The mountain was the wall of earth. The wall became heaped up on the two, two sides and they went five abreast to the Red Sea. 
So what did they do? The mountain, the water, divided the earth, and the east wind come to try to shoot. And the wind five above press through the midst of the sea. Now when Pharaoh came in at a certain time, he was darkness to the Egyptians and light to the children of Israel. So he manifests in light and darkness. And when the appropriate time, and they were trapped in the Red Sea, and he started, Yahweh started fight the battle for the children of Israel. He ran down fire and brimstone at them. And then what Pharaoh said, truly Yahweh fight the what for them. See? So when they came out into the wilderness, when they came out, see, the, the, the children of Israel saw the dead bodies when they came out. So the scripture lesson this morning is showing us how they came out. And when they came out, they started singing praises to Yahweh. See? And then you see Miriam take, take up the Timberlands, you see? And she started to beat and she started to play. And she, you see? And she started to sing. And what they were they singing? They were singing how great Yahweh is. See? And the 11 girls say, Who is like unto thee, O Yahweh, among the gods? Because Pharaoh and his host, who worship in many gods. Who is lightly glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. See? Now, if you go something, from the 22nd verse, you're going to find after singing all those praise to Yahweh, what come and happen? He just delivered them. Please read. So Moses brought Israel. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Through the Red Sea. And they went out into the wilderness. And they went out into the wilderness. Of sure. Of sure. And they went three days in the wilderness. They went three days in the wilderness. And found no water. And they found no water. That's, that's not going to happen. And when they came to Mara. And when they came to Mara. They could not drink of the water. They could not drink of the water. For they were bitter. For they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. And the people murmured against Moses. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, saying, What shall we drink? What shall we drink? And he cried unto Yahweh. And he cried unto Yahweh. And Yahweh showed him a tree. And Yahweh showed him a tree. Which when he had cast it into the waters. Which when he had cast it into the water. The water was made sweet. The water was made sweet. There he made for them a statute. And there he made for them a statue and an ordinance. And, an ordinance. and there he proved them. And there he proved them. So now what happened now? He just delivered them. He just devastated Egypt. And they just couldn't get no water to drink. And they started through the two qualities. See, they started to get murmur against Moses. Go 26. And said, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of Yahweh. So Moses is telling them, If you will diligently hearken unto the voice of Yahweh, thy Elohim, thy Elohim, and will do what is right in his sight, and do what is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, and keep all his laws, all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you. I will put none of these diseases upon you. Which hold on, hold on. No, he didn't tell them that he's not going to put the diseases upon them. 
it has a condition. The condition is, if you will obey me and happen unto my voice, then you would not get the diseases that just put on Pharaoh and his people. In other words, if you go against me, you're going to get some of the same things that are given to you. See? See, people that read the book and don't understand that. If you go against Yahweh, he's going to treat you just like how he treated Pharaoh and his host. Go down to the 16th verse, 16th chapter. And they took their journey. And they took their journey from Elam. From Elam. And all the congregation of and all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness. Of came sin, into the wilderness of sin. Of sin. Which is between Elam. Which is between Elam and Sinai. And Sinai. On the fifteenth day of the second month. On the fifteenth day of the second month. After their departing out of Egypt. So that's the fifteenth of what? I mean. The second month. First month is Abel, which is April. The second month will be what? May. So the 15th day of May. Mm -hmm. And the whole congregation of Israel. And the whole congregation of Israel murmured against Moses. Murmured against Moses and Aaron, and Aaron in the wilderness. So you see what's going on? He just delivered them, you know. They reached into the wilderness and they started to get on back. The out of control. You know. And the children of Israel. And the children of Israel, of Israel said, unto them, said unto them, What that we have died by the hand of Yahweh. What that we shall die at the hand of Yahweh. In the land of Egypt. In the land of Egypt. Then we sat by the flesh pots. When we sat by the flesh pots. And when we did eat bread to the food. And when we did eat bread to the food. For you have brought us forth into this wilderness. For you have brought us forth into this wilderness. To kill this whole assembly with hunger. To kill this whole assembly with hunger. So they're hungry. They have no respect for nobody when they're hungry. Hmm? So they started to get on God again. Mm -hmm. Then said Yahweh unto Moses. Then said Yahweh unto Moses. Behold, Behold, I will bring bread from heaven. I will bring bread from heaven for you. For you. And the people shall go up. And the people shall go up. And gather a certain rate. And gather a certain rate every day. That I may prove them. That I may prove them. You see what he's doing? He's proving them. If you just don't give them something, and you're going to prove them. Mm. Whether they will walk in my law. Whether or not. they will walk in my law or not. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. That on the sixth day. That on the sixth day. They shall prepare that which they bring in. They shall be prepare that which they bring in. And it shall be twice as much. And it shall be twice as much. As they gather daily. As they gather daily. Read on. And Moses and Aaron said to Cheron. And Moses and Aaron said to Cheron. At even. At even. Then you shall know. Then you shall know. That Yahweh had brought you out from Egypt. That Yahweh had brought you out from Egypt. And in the morning. And in the morning, when you shall see the glory of Yahweh, you shall see the glory of Yahweh. For that he heareth your murmurs. For that he heareth your murmurs against Yahweh. Against Yahweh. And what are we? And what are we? That he murmur against us. That he murmur against us. So this children of Israel, you see, by being hungry, the true personality had a show. Read on, because they need something. And Moses said, And Moses said, This shall be, This shall be, When Yahweh shall give you in the evening, When Yahweh shall give you in the evening, Flesh to eat, Flesh to eat, And in the morning, And in the, the morning, Bread to the food, Bread to the food. For that Yahweh heareth your murmuring, For that Yahweh heareth your murmuring, Which he murmur against him, Which he murmur against him. And what are we? And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us. Your murmur are not against us, but against Yahweh. But against Yahweh. And Moses spake unto Aaron. And Moses spake unto Aaron. Say unto all the congregation of Israel. Say unto all the congregation of Israel. Come near before Yahweh. Come near near before Yahweh. For he hath heard your murmuring. For he hath heard your murmuring. 
and it came to pass. And it came to pass as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation. As Aaron came to the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked towards the wilderness. That, that they looked towards the wilderness. And behold, the glory of Yahweh appeared. And before all the glory of Yahweh appeared in the cloud. In the cloud. And Yahweh spoke unto Moses, saying, and Yahweh spoke unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmuring. I have put the memory of the children of Israel. The children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, Speak unto them, saying, At even, at even, ye shall eat flesh. Ye shall eat flesh. And in the morning, and in the morning, ye shall be filled with bread. Ye shall be filled with bread. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh. Your Elohim. Your and it came to pass. And it came to pass. That at even. That at even. The quails came. The quails came. And covered the camp. And covered the camp. And in the morning. And in the morning. The Jews lay round about. The Jew lay round about. The host. Mm -hmm. And when the Jew that lay was born up. Sorry. What verse? 14. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And when the Jew that lay was born up. And when the Jew that lay was born up. Behold. Behold. Upon the face of the wilderness. Upon the face of the wilderness. There lay a small place. They are made it smaller. Plate. What that book say? Plate. Plate. Okay. That Bible is saying yes. Read it again. Fourteen. Uh, and when the Jew that and lay then when the Jew that lay was born up, was born up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there yeah. lay a small plate. Okay. This this King James saying. There lay a small wrong thing, as small as a four crust on the ground. All right, what you are saying? A small plate. A four plate. Go ahead. And when the children of Israel saw it. And when the children of Israel saw it. They said one to another. They said one to another. This is manna. This is manna. For they knew not what it was. For they knew not what it was. And Moses said unto them. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread. This is the bread which Yahweh had given you. Which Yahweh had given you to eat. This is the thing. This is the thing which Yahweh had commanded. Which Yahweh had commanded. Gather of it every man. Gather of it every man. According to his eating. According to his eating. And Uma for every man. A Uma for every man. According to the number of your persons. According to the number of your persons. Take ye every man. Take ye every man. For them which are in his tents. For them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so. And the children of Israel did so. And gathered some more. And and gathered some more. And some less. And some less. And when they measured it. And when they measured. Mm -hmm. All right. With an omar. This Bible have when they meet her, when they did meet her it, with an omar. That Bible has when they measured it with with an omar. He that gathered much, he that gathered much, had nothing over, had nothing over, and he that gathered little, and he that gathered it little, had no lack, and no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. They gathered every man according to his eating. And Moses said, and Moses said, let no man leave of it. Let no man leave of it until the morning. Until the morning. Notwithstanding, notwithstanding, they happen not unto Moses. They have not unto Moses. But some of them left of it until the morning. But some of them left of it until the morning. And it bread rose. And it bread rose. And stamped. And, stamped. and Moses was wrought with them. And Moses was wrought with them. Hold on there. So they were hungry. And as they were hungry and they ate nothing to eat, when they started to get hungry. See? So Yahweh provided for them quail, which is a bird, the meat of a bird. See? And they call the four crusts, they call it manna because they say they did not know what to do with it. See? But really, what it was, it was coriander seeds. You see? And with that coriander seed, they had to get the water and the pestle, and they had to grind that seed until they make it into a flowery. Something like on the flower, and then they will go and need need that flower and make the dough. So that is what they got. So if you pay attention to it, what they got, they had to work with it. 
she didn't have to work with it. It's important. You see, they have to work with it. So look at the quail, which is the bird, bird meat, and the coriander seed. But if you know this, and if you tell them, not to leave it until the morning, not to leave it outside until the what? The morning. But do you think that they, they listen? No. So they just get in it, first time, and he's giving them the instructions how to use it. And they're disobedient. If you watch something, you see that disobedient spirit in the children of Israel. Hmm? You see that murmuring spirit. See? You see that backbiting spirit coming from the children of Israel. And they gathered it every morning. And they gathered it every morning. Each man according to his eating. Each or every man according to his eating. And when the sun grew hot. And when the sun waxed hot or grew hot, it melted. It melted. And it came to pass. And it came to pass that on the sixth day. That on the sixth day they gathered twice as much. Bread. They gathered twice as much. Two omers for one man. So the two omers for one man. This, this Bible has, they gather twice as much bread. But did they gather twice as much bread? This is the King James Version, no. Because Yahweh didn't bring down no big bread for anybody. So simple as the shook things in the book. He didn't rain down no bread, he rained down coriander seeds. They had to make the bread. Mm -hmm. Two omers for one man. Two omers for one man. And all the rulers of the congregation of Israel. And all the rulers of the congregation of Israel. Came unto Moses. Came unto Moses. And he said unto them. And he said unto them. This is that which Yahweh had said. This is what this is that what Yahweh had said. Tomorrow is the rest. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. Is that correct? Unto Yahweh. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto Yahweh. Bake that which you bake today. Bake that which you, that you will bake today. And boil that you will boil. And boil this at sea. Boil which which one? You will boil. Boil which you will you will boil today. And that which remaineth over. And that which remaineth over. Lay up for you to be kept. Lay up for you to be kept. To be kept until the morning. And they laid it up. And they laid it up till the morning. Till the morning. As Moses bade. As Moses bade. And it did not stink. And it did not stink. Neither were there any wounds there. Neither were there any wounds there. And Moses said. And Moses said. Be that today. For today is a Sabbath. For today is a Sabbath. Unto Yahweh. Unto Yahweh. Today you shall not find in the fields. Today you shall not find in the fields. Six days you shall gather it. Six days you shall gather it. But on the seventh day. But on the seventh day. Which is the Sabbath. Which is the Sabbath. In it there shall be none. In it there shall be none. So if you notice something, after the children of Israel came out into the wilderness, and they were hungry, and they murmured, then Yahweh gave them the quail and the coriander seed. With the coriander seed, they would make the bread. See, and they were not supposed to leave it till the next day outside. They did, and it stunk. Then, when it was coming, the, Yahweh is setting up now the Sabbath. This is the beginning of the implementation, see, of the Sabbath. And you say, now, what you do, you take twice as much, you boil it. You cook it because the next day is going to be the Sabbath. So, they, in other words, they had to, the day before the Sabbath, they had to take twice as much and they have to prepare it 
because on the Sabbath day, they can't, they will not get any. Please go ahead and read. Which, where are you reading from? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. And it came to pass. And it came to pass that they went out some of the people. They went out some of the people on the seventh day. On the seventh day. For to gather. For to gather. And they found them. And they found them. So the first Sabbath that was given to Moses and the children of Israel, they didn't keep it. He said, "Don't go outside. You will not get any." You have some of them going outside on the Sabbath. Hmm? Because the Sabbath means a rest. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said unto Moses. And Yahweh said unto Moses. How long refuse he? How long refuse he to keep my commandments? To keep my commandments and my, and my laws. laws. See? See? So if you notice something, the first Sabbath they ain't keeping it, the children of Israel. Hmm? Read on. See for that Yahweh has given you. See that for that Yahweh has given you the Sabbath. The Sabbath. Therefore he gave it to you on the sixth day. Therefore he gave it you on the sixth day. The bread of two days. The bread of two days. Abiding every man in his place. Abiding every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh, on the sab seventh day. So he said, on the Sabbath day. Nobody must come out of the house. That's the Bible. Every man have to stay inside the house on the Sabbath day. Read on. So the people rested on the Sabbath day. So the people rested on the Sabbath day. And the house of Israel called the name of it Manna. And the house of Israel called, called the name the of Manna. And it was like coriander seed. And it was like coriander seed. Why? Why? And the taste of it was like wafers. And the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. See? And Moses said. And Moses said. This is the thing which Yahweh. Commanded. This is the thing which Yahweh had commanded. Fill and Oma of it. Fill, fill and Oma of it. To be kept for your generations. To be kept for your generations. That they may see the bread. That they may see the bread. Where was I have fed you? Where was I have fed you in the wilderness? When I brought you forth. When I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto Aaron. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot. Take a pot. And put an omer full of manna. And put an omer full of manna. Therein. And lay it up before Yahweh. And lay it up before Yahweh. To be kept from your generation. To be kept for who? For your generations. Whose generation is that? For your generation. It's for a particular generation of people. It wasn't for everybody. Else. Read on. As Yahweh commanded Moses. As Yahweh commanded Moses. So Aaron laid it up. So Aaron laid it up before the testimony. Before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Israel did eat manna. And the children of Israel did eat manna. Forty years. Forty years. Until they came to a land inhabited. And till they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna. They did eat manna. Until they came onto the borders of the Canaan. Until they came came into the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an Omer is the tenth part of an Ephraim. So if you notice something, at this point, Yahweh is giving the children of Israel both food and he's setting up the Sabbath with them. And that Sabbath, you see, that on the sixth day, they must prepare twice as much food for on the seventh day, Is the rest of Yahweh. Stay inside your house, nobody comes out. 
That's the original, that's the Sabbath that Yahweh gave. Do you remember he tell them don't light no fire? Exodus 35. Hmm? 35 and 2. We get Exodus to the five new Sabbath verses. Please read. And Moses gathered all the And Moses gathered all the, all the congregation of the children of Israel together. And said unto them. And said unto them. These are the words. These are the words which Yahweh had commanded. That he should do them. That he should do them. Six days shall work be done. Six days shall work be done. But on the seventh day. But on the seventh day. There shall be unto you a holy day. There shall be unto you as of a holy day. A Sabbath of rest to Yahweh. A Sabbath of rest to Yahweh. Whosoever do it good. Whosoever do it good. Therein. Shall be put to death. Shall be put to death. So hear this. See anybody who did, did any type of work on the Sabbath day is to be put to what? Put to death. You know. You shall kindle no fire. You shall what? Do what? Kindle no fire. You shall kindle no fire. In other words, he said, don't light no fire. You know. Throughout your habitation. Throughout your habitation. Upon the Sabbath day. Upon the Sabbath day. Don't light no fire. Mm hmm. Would like me. So there's not a light in the fire. There's not to come out of the house. They to be killed.
the blue bell um, should run up this bell. The other one was just coming up and I'm going to suck up there. Numbers 15, 22. Numbers? 15, 22. Numbers 15, 22. 32. And while the children of Israel, and while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks. They found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. Upon the Sabbath day. And they that found him, gathering and they that sticks, found him, gathering sticks, gathering sticks, brought him unto Moses and Aaron. Brought him unto Moses and Aaron. And unto all the congregation. And unto all the congregation. And they put him in ward. And they put him in ward, which is they put him in jail. Because it was not declared what should be done unto Because him. it was not declared what should be done unto the man. And Yahweh said unto Moses. And Yahweh said unto Moses. The man shall be surely put to death. The man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones. All the congregation shall stone him with stones. Without the tent. Without the tent. So now the Sabbath law was given to the children of Israel in the wilderness. And we've seen they continually breaking the Sabbath or they're not obeying the law of the Sabbath. They were told to remain in the house, do, do no manner of work on the Sabbath day. Don't light any fire, don't cook no food. See, even when you go, you find, while speaking, you can find for many hours. Where they were selling wares on the Sabbath day. See? So they were told that. They were told anybody breaking the Sabbath, you have to die. You'll be put to death. So here it is you had a man come outside on the Sabbath day gathering sticks. And he was, those who found him, gathering the sticks. Reported on him, and he was put into jail or in ward. And Yahweh instructed that the people must stone him to death. But I have a question: since everyone was to stay indoors, how did they find him gathering sticks? See what I'm saying? But everybody was supposed to be inside the house resting. So even those who found him bad in states, they also broke, broke the Sabbath. For they were supposed to be inside resting, no man of work. So we see that the children of Israel was continuously disobedient to the spoken word of Yahweh. Because they were evil, selling wares on the Sabbath day, doing trade, buying and selling on the Sabbath day. Did you get it? Please, where are you getting from? Let's have Nehemiah 10 to 1. Nehemiah 10 to 1. 10 to 1. And 13 to 1.
Nehemiah ten thirty-one to three. And if the people of the land, the land bring wares, bring wares, or any victuals, or any victuals on the Sabbath, on the Sabbath, the Sabbath, 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 Sabbath day. Sell, to sell that we will not buy it of them. That we will not buy it of them on the Sabbath day. On the Sabbath day. Or on the holy day. Or on the holy day. And that we will leave the seventh year. And we, we, we will leave the seventh year. And the exaction of every day. And the exaction of every day. Now, the question is, how does this arise? If you realize in what they're doing, they were told not to come out your house. See? So how the people of the land is going to bring beers or victuals on the Sabbath day to sell? Hmm? If you're inside your house, how come you're buying and selling on the Sabbath day? Hmm? You shouldn't be doing that. So if you, what I'm showing you, they're not obeying what Yahweh tell them to do on the Sabbath day. What's the next one? Nehemiah 13, 15. Nehemiah 13, 15. We might drop down to 17, okay? Nehemiah 13, 15. In those days, in those days, so I in Judah, so I in Judah, some treading wine presses, some treading wine presses on the Sabbath. On the Sabbath. In other words, they were working. So, so he's saying, Nehemiah is saying, he is seeing some of the, the children of Israel working in the wine press on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. And leading asses. And, and leading asses. And bringing in sheaves. And bringing in sheaves. As also wine. And also wine. Grapes. Grapes. And figs. And figs. And all manner of burdens. And all manner of burdens. Which they brought into Jerusalem. Which they brought into Jerusalem. On the Sabbath day. On the Sabbath day. And I testified against them. And I testify against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. In the day wherein they sold victuals. So they were buying and selling. They were working as normal. Hmm? They were bringing in books. They were trying in burdens. They, they were working hard. Read on, 16. There dwelt men of Tyre. There the, the dwelt men of Tyre. Also therein. Also therein. Which brought fish. Which brought fish. And all manner of wares. And all manner of wares. And sold on the Sabbath day. And sold on the Sabbath day. Unto the children of Judah. Unto the children of Judah. And in Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, and said unto them What evil thing is this? What evil thing is this that you do that you do and profane the Sabbath and profane the Sabbath? So if you recognize something, both in the law and in the prophets, you see the children of Israel not keeping the Sabbath. Go to the scripture that says, I give them my Sabbath of the Ezekiel 2012.
Israel. Moreover, Moreover also, I gave them my Sabbath. I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them. To be a sign between me and them. That they might know. That they might know. That I am Yahweh. That I am Yahweh. That sanctify them. That sanctify them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me. But the house of Israel rebelled against me. In the wilderness. In the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes. They walked not in my statutes or in my laws. And they despised my judgments. And they despised my judgments. Which if a man do. Which if a man do. He shall even live in them. He shall even live in them. And my Sabbaths they greatly polluted. And my Sabbaths they greatly polluted. Then said I. Then said I. I will cause my fury upon them. I will cause my fury upon them. In the wilderness. In the wilderness. To consume them. To consume them. But I wrote for my holy name's sake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen in whose sight I brought them out. So if you notice something, Yahweh is saying he, the reason he gave them the Sabbath is to be a sign. Is the sign the real thing? See, the sign is not the real thing. So the Sabbath was not to be kept. It was a sign. It's not the reality. See? So we go into the law. We have gone to the law. And we have gone to the testimony or the prophet. And we're dealing with the Sabbath. When it was given, under what conditions it was given, and for what purpose it was given, it was given to be a sign. And they were not to leave their houses. They were not to cook no food on the Sabbath day. They was not to do any work. And we see they did all that and more. See? So at this point, what I want you to go back, Matthew 5, 17 and 18. I want to keep that before you. See, because you give them the Sabbath as a sign. And that is what Yahshua was telling us, the people back there. He said, think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill it. For very life say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So the Sabbath is a, a law, is that correct? So he has to fulfill it. If he did not fulfill it, then it would still be in operation. But you think about it in this way before we close. That will the Savior of the world come back and give the children of Israel something they never kept? Hmm? And say it's a new covenant? So you come to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Yahudah or Judah. I just want to leave that on your mind. You see? And for those who think they have to keep the Sabbath, then if you keep in it, you have to keep it exactly how Yahweh gave it. So if they're not doing exactly what Yahweh gave it, then according to the law, they're supposed to be put to death. It's not a threat. And it was not given to anybody but the Jews and the Jews alone. See, we will continue with the Sabbath, the next class. Are there any questions? Since there are no questions, let's stand to be dismissed. No one to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Yahweh, our enemy, to Yahshua Messiah, our sovereign, belongs glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and for all times, let us say hallelujah. Thank each and every one of you for listening this morning. Thank each and every one of you who have learned something this morning. You have a good day and stay safe.